Hey, everybody. Welcome back from break. And I uh, really appreciate um, taking the time to incorporate these things in the chat. The cool thing is, um, let me just tell you something I'm working on for work. So I have to tell you that um, I always dreamed about working in professional sports, but I never knew how, figured out how that was going to happen, especially after we started the business. And um, it's all through relationships. And I, it's, my life is surreal to me because like I, when I have team presidents, general, general managers and head coaches of NFL teams calling and asking for it. I don't know anything about football. However, when it comes to leading um, and creating culture and being intentional with that, that's how we can be helpful. And um, even when they're building a staff and that all came from the SIG, SIG up network, that's where it started. Uh, a mentee of mine who was about 10 years behind me uh, was in one of our chapters in Pennsylvania. He worked on staff. He stayed in touch. His wife works for the Philadelphia Eagles. Her boss wanted to do a retreat and the rest is history. They hired me to come in to do a retreat for them. And then I was in Philly working with the Eagles a lot. And then the Eagles executives convinced the the NFL home office to hire me to keynote for all of their, all their teams and all their corporate executives. And I share that because one of the things I'm working on now that with them right now is with success. There's extrinsic and there's intrinsic, right? Extrinsic is external motivators. So that would be me calling Anthony and getting him pumped up for something, right? That's extrinsic. It's like a quick little shot in the arm, but that will wear over time. Intrinsic motiva motivation or intrinsic whatever, that's when you have an internal fire. You are fueled by something. And in leadership, if you can create an environment where you can connect the dots with your members to have an, an intrinsic passion for the fraternity, and they are a part of something that is creating value for them, and that's how they stick around. What's interesting is um, there is above the line, but there is another layer within it. Uh, we know that, that uh, accountability is above the line, right? But if you think about it in the corporate space, accountability is more extrinsic. I hold Magnus accountable, right? As his boss per se. But what's more intrinsic is personal responsibility. That's, that's a, that's, it's slightly different. That's now if Magnus can, can, can actually lead into and hold himself responsible and take personal responsibility that's again creating self-efficacy and that's him working intrinsically well he will create a level of self-mastery in that instance the cool thing is is when you're using the chat that is a layer of building responsibility for your chapters along with having an accountability system in partnership with the headquarters staff each other and your volunteers to help make all this stuff happen and if you, I mean, you guys have all, I mean, gosh, your school life in the last three years has been all Zoom. So you probably know it better than I do. But the cool thing is, is that uh, my setting is, is that when I lead these things, the chat, it stays archived for me. So there will be a follow-up mechanism to ensure that you're holding yourselves responsible for what you're putting out here. Now, um, I want to switch gears. We have 40 minutes left. And if there's room for questions, we'll have them. And if there's not, then I'll have you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, and I appreciate everyone taking the time out of your weekend to be with me today. Um, what's next? You identified how you define success, things you want to keep doing, you know, your what's not working and you transition. So you went above the line. What's This isn't working. Okay, but you went above the line and you identified. So what's the request that we have? You've done that. Good. Now... You're going to go back in your small groups. You're going to go back with your chapters. And um, I will give you prompts like I had been before. And the first prompt that I'll get you started with now, you're going to have about probably 20 total minutes-ish. But you know what? Let's just because of the back and forth, I'll probably keep you in your small groups and I'll just, I'll type in 
your prompts rather than, because normally I'd have you come back in a large group, I'd give you your directions and then send you back out. But there's so many of you, I want to make sure that we're having um, less back and forth. I you want you to, it. oops, say again. It's cheaper. Oh. Um, so what I want you to do in your chapter groups, this is what I want you to do. I, now I want you to start listing your chapter priorities, however many you got. I want you to work together and I want you to list as many of your chapter priorities that you have things that you want to knock out. What's important to you? What are your priorities? So do that. You should probably, you're going to spend probably, and I want you to be quick. Hopefully you can write them down fast. And I want you to write them down. So however you're going to capture that, I'm going to give you four minutes to list as many of your chapter priorities as possible. Actually, I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three minutes once I know that everyone's in your breakout. So you'll have three minutes to identify your chapter priorities. I, all right, Alex, let's put them in their chapters and um, I will be sending you notes uh, in the breakouts here shortly. What have we done? Um, you define success, you identify what you wanna keep doing, you identify what's not working, you transit each of those, your three most important what's not working into a specific request, good. Then you identified all the priorities of the chapter of which you identified three that are the major priorities of the chapter. And then you, you ranked them one, two, and three. So that's where we're at. Um, the entire session will close in about 10 seconds. Not us, but the breakout room session today. Okay. So we're all back. <clears throat> we're all back again. Uh, you've defined success. You have, um, you talked about what's working, what's not working. You identified what's not working into a request. Okay, it's giving some, some specific direction. That's good. Identified all of your chapter priorities, which is probably a lot. And then of that list, you identified three, three major priorities that you have as a chapter. Uh, then you just rank them one, to, one, two, and three. I will say this. Um, it is better to move three things 10 miles than try to attempt to move 10 things three miles. So what I want you to do, somebody in, from each chapter in the chat field, identify your, in order, your three priorities that you came up with in your small group session. So if you could do that now, I want to see what some of those are. What do you got? Your priorities. Jacob, you're all over it. You know, one of the things I'm seeing things coming up here is what you'll want to do is um, you'll want to further, uh, for some of the chapters, we'll want to further galvanize what that actually means. So um, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. So for example, it says, uh, I guess, Oregon Alpha, live in numbers, grades and financial accountability. So for each of those, the big phrase that I teach in leadership is, and what I mean by that is. So again, I see Cal Mew, accountability, finances, and recruitment. And what I mean by accountability is this, this, and this. You want to, you don't have to do this now, but that would be the next step of, of how you can actually lead a successful, um, lead your chapter in a successful way. And what I mean by that is, that is, the, that is a very important phrase. Why is that important? Because Remember how we talked about stealth expectations in leadership, the easiest way to air a stealth expectation is to reduce the amount of misinterpretation. How do you do that? So if I work with, let's say an NFL general manager, and let's say that they have a quarterback and they say to their owner, Hey, we need to be patient with our quarterback's development. Now that's a very good statement you would think. And it's also really harmful. Why is it harmful? It's harmful because I would, I would ask the general manager, well, what sort of duration of time do you put to that? Right. And so any football fan could say, well, if it's a younger quarterback, you would think probably maybe 20 months, maybe be patient with your overall development. And if you don't say that, then you actually have a margin of error of misinterpretation, meaning the owner's probably thinking three days, maybe two weeks. So you could say that we need to be patient with our quarterback's development. 
And by patient, what I mean by that is this is going to be a 20 month process and really be focusing on these three things over the next two weeks, you should see the development come in this, this, and this. So for all of you, um, it would be real important that you continue to fine tune what that is and what I mean by that is the more descriptive that you can be, the more realistic it can be. And the easier it is it is a hold yourself accountable, but also get people to rally around that. So that's how I would take it a little bit further. Now, uh, let's see here. Indiana Theta bros, somebody come live. Indiana Theta unmute yourself. Who wants to talk to me? Somebody who we got. Yeah. What, up? what up dudes hey, hey what, what, what what university is indiana theta trine, trine. university I'm trine so e3. you mean tell, do you mean to tell me that that's john milliken's old university yeah. do you know that john milliken lives like five miles from me john milliken is a legend <laughs> oh, yeah, i i mean i remember him back in the day 20 years ago when I worked on staff. He's the man. Um, yeah. So give me give me an example of, I see that you have your three priorities there, but put um, can, grab one of those priorities and put a little language to it for us. Oh, uh, our goals. Yeah. So when we put priority number two there, we have exceed our goals on um, recruitment, fundraising, philanthropy. So our past e-boards have kind of, you know, paved the way for us. But we are now starting to get to the point where we're, you know, setting a standard and um, hoping to exceed that for each of these. So for recruitment, we set a number of guys we'd like to bring in and match it up with the amount of guys we're losing. Um, in terms of fundraising, we're just, oh, do you want me to put the, okay. Okay. Um, so we set a $5,000 fundraising goal and we want to have more than four fundraisers. Um, and then we also set a goal of 25 spring, uh, PNMs and 15 for the fall. So, okay. okay. And those are, those numbers for us are pretty, pretty big. So that's, that's pretty good for us. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that one. Thank you for sharing. And I'll tell Milliken, uh, that, that uh, you, um, you guys said, hi, so I'm looking here. I'm just going to pull up here, Kyle Taylor. North Dakota Alpha, University of North Dakota. Kyle, where are you, dude? Hello. What up? Hey, Kyle. Hi. I can't see your video, but you have, it's not, I'm going to bet that you're handsome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm seeing fun and engaging environment. So tell me, and what, and, and, what I, and what I mean by that is, what the hell does that mean to you? Uh, well, it kind of comes down to event planning, uh, which we have, you know, recruitment events, social events with other houses. And it's just about coming up with ideas and brainstorming with other guys in the house of uh, just what those events are. And, you know, it's North Dakota. There's not much to do up here. So it takes a lot of brain power to just come together and think of things that'll be fun and get guys over to the house or wherever we have the event. Okay. That's good. And, and again, for everybody in, in these things, if they're short, we want to make sure and what I mean by that is, right? So um, that'll be real important. So let's see here. The Calm, you guys, I got accountability, finances, and recruitment. So, okay, then those are some of the priorities. And what I mean by that is now what, here's what the next order of business. We have 18 minutes. What I want you to do in the next 18 minutes is this. What I have identified here. It, here's what I've got. You individually for your individual, uh, for your individual role there with the executive council, I want you to identify three goals that you have for yourself. We don't have to go in small groups. I'm going to give you what I call I time. That's a little bit of time that you can just work on your own. But um, what are three goals? And your goals have to dovetail and support one, some, or all of the three of the priorities that you have in place in some way, shape, or form. So take a moment. I'm going to give you, I'll give you about uh, six minutes to identify three goals. Once you be thoughtful of it and remember who here can tell me about smart goals. Does anybody remember what smart goals are? You ever heard of that before? Yeah. The South South who has just someone come off mute and teach us what it is. Isn't it um, specific? Uh, nah, mm, 
manageable. No, that might not be it. But anyway, uh, A is achievable. Uh, R is time, like restricted, it's like time restricted. And then T is uh, restricted and then time-based. I probably just fudged that all up. So my bad. I'm That's pretty okay. sure it's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timing. There we go. There you go. So with your goals, we want to make sure that it's very specific. You can measure it, you know, attainable, realistic, and timely. Put a time, put a time stamp on it. So clearly we know that you're not going to be this, this particular chapter officer forever. So <clears throat> some things happen at different parts of the year. So I'm going to give you six minutes to make sure that you identify three goals for yourself. And I want to make sure that they work in partnership. When you achieve those goals, it's actually going and fueling the priorities that you have identified as a chapter. Going to give you six minutes. Um, I'm just going to stop my video. I'm still going to be here. You've got six minutes to do that. Okay. So now you have your three goals and um, I'm going to have to just trust that you have them and they're very specific. They are measurable and specifically they're timely. I remember working with an executive once. I actually, no, he was, he was a leader in an organization and he was an interesting dude. And we were working on his goal setting. And he was like, I think he was 37 or 38 at the time. And his, his goal was that he wanted to pitch for the Yankees. He'd never played professional ball, never played college ball. I'm like, that's not really realistic here, pal. So I hope that your goals are realistic. And um, so now what I want you to do is for <clears throat> each of your three goals, I'm going to give you five minutes to identify three benchmarks that you know that you need to hit to make your individual three goals happen. So I'm going to give you five minutes to identify three benchmarks for each of your goals um, so that to know that you're on, you're on pace. So five minutes timer will start right now. We've got it. We only have five minutes left. So you've got a number of things that you've got started here. This is a spark. I want you to work with each other. I want you to work with your volunteers. Uh, you can use staff as a resource to help make this come to life. Um, I, I wrote this note that I want to make sure I read it. So we've got it here handy. Um, it's important that you do this because oftentimes uh, we can be blown off course. We can be distracted. And when you identify what's really important, yeah, it's okay to have flexibility and pivot. Sometimes, a lot of times, we need a compass like what you're starting to build here to help us decide what we need to say no to. It's important for you to realize that every time that you say yes, you're actually saying no to something else. And if you got too much on your plate, you're trying to do too much as a chapter, you're watering down the experience and you make it easy for people to walk, take on too much stuff. I don't know if you saw the promo video I cut, um, but I think I said something like, you probably only really have about four months of working time to get the stuff done in your role when you start factoring in breaks and summer, all that stuff. So um, we have three minutes. I have time. Literally, if someone has a burning question, you're welcome to come off mute and ask. Otherwise, I'm going to send you on your way to watch some NFL football games. Anybody have anything before we part ways in three minutes? I have San Francisco over Seattle next. That game is on shortly. If anyone's curious. Yes, sir. Peyton. Yes. No, no questions. Nothing. I was just saying yes, sir, oh. for the Niners. I hope they win. Ah, oh, Seahawks, baby. You know, one of unfortunate uh, Seahawk fan here. You, you know, Amanda's from Seattle. She went to what? She went to Wazoo. Uh, you probably don't know him, but D. Eskridge is well. He was your third receiver, but he broke his hand. My wife is. Yeah, he went to Western Michigan, right? So did I. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Amanda's been mentoring him since he was a sophomore. He stayed like. During the pandemic, he came here and stayed here with us. So he's like our child, though he's oh wow. I'm not quite old enough to be his dad. So we're very close. I want to see him be successful, but he can't can't be around. So there's someone has a hand raised. Christian, you have your hand raised, dude. Um, yeah. So this is actually Muhammad speaking, but 
What up, Mike? Um, so we, we're in NJ Zeta, which is Rider University. Um, our school's uh, PWI, so Predominantly White Institute. Um, how would we kind of, a lot of the, the social fraternities on our campus have this like skewed perspective where it's a lot of like white men um, and we're struggling to get diversity within our chapter. What's something that we can do to get away from this stigma? And I've been working towards it. I'm, I'm the MD now. So I've been just trying to, I mean, I, I, my name is Mohammed, so I'm not, I'm not white, but um, I've been trying to just instill this idea that diversity is what breaks us over the, the like the hill, like just, you know what I mean? I'm, I do. I'm struggling. Because so to, to we don't have, we have a minute. I will yeah. say this, in order to get a diverse portfolio of amazing people in your organization, you have to specifically recruit all of you need to have the mindset that like you're a college football head coach. They all go out and they meet the people where they are. You need to find people who have diverse backgrounds and say, who are people that you know that don't want to be a part of a normal fraternity experience that want to be up to some big shit. Yeah. That's how you do it. Then you start meeting them where they are start having the conversations and building the relationships over time. I remember when um, I would give sorority presentations as a staff member. And I would say, how, describe the normal frat guy. And they say all the bad things. I'm like, bingo. We don't want anyone like that. If you know anyone who would not want to be joined, who would never join a fraternity, that's exactly who I want to talk to. But you need to be very specific with the ask. I would go, I would literally go to the people who are your favorite people. And I would ask them for that specific thing. So I know that we've got to run. Um, I'm seeing this thing about, by, by the way, this guy named Ed O'Connell. Ed O'Connell, do you know, Kevin O'Connell, the head coach, must be a relative head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. How could you actually go against Minnesota Vikings? It's a line of ours. Freaking Ed. Where's Ed? Um, yeah, uh, no relation. Go Giants. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend played for the Giants. Everybody, thank you for taking time to see me. I appreciate all of you leaning in. This is a start. And um, get it done, man. Let's take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.